Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. My name is Mark Spencer, and with me today is actually not Steve Martin. No, not even close. Uh, again, <laughs> but um, we have a guest that was recently on one of our uh, Fanica Pro 10 virtual user groups. And if you don't know what that is, you want to check that out at uh, RippleTraining.com or look at the Ripple Training YouTube channel, where we've been doing uh, every month having a virtual user group with various guests where we talk about Fanica Pro 10. So our guest today is Bill Davis. Bill is from Scottsdale, Arizona, where he is a corporate editor and a big Final Cut Pro 10 user, and he's going to share us a few tips today about uh, using Final Cut. Yeah, and I actually want to do something that's kind of basic, but that people skip over because a lot of people, when they come to 10, they start like diving in and they don't understand anything about these core things like keywording. And I wanted to take that back to a basic area because I see a lot of people talk about this and they, they really don't even have a strategy for using things like the basic favorite reject unrate tags and it can be a very powerful thing it's really the starting do. point of editing after you get through importing if you do this part correctly it will make building your edit so much easier hugely easier and, it, mm -hmm. and most people consider this a huge chore and you know it's like oh gosh I got to go through and I got to mark everything you don't really but if you come up with a strategy for marking things quickly and efficiently it will really just generate huge time savings later on as you're actually editing and you need to review your footage anyway to get familiar with it and you you're do. able to do all of this marking during this review process. You do. Okay, so the precursor to this is that everybody who's been editing for a long time, I, I hope you all have figured out the JKL basic transport controls. They've been around since the early AVID days and most editors understand that if you use J as go backwards, L as go forwards, if you tap them more than once you go faster in either direction. Mm -hmm. You can use them in coordination with the K key in the middle and in fact if you tap K and hold it down and tap either J or L, you will move single frames forward right. and backward. All of these things, when you get to know how to do this kind of effectively and just as a second nature thing, moves you to edit points really quickly. Great, well why don't you show us, show us how it works here. Sure, what I'm gonna do is, one of the things you should also know is as you're navigating through clips, and I'm gonna use this big clip here from a program we do called Start Editing Now, which is something we sell in schools. It's just basically scenes like you'd come out of the raw field footage. And if I wanted to keyword this, I want to set ranges, which is the process, and then keyword them, and I'm using these dashboard tags, I'm either going to use the green favorite, the unrate center star, or I'm going to use the reject. Okay. Now, when people start out with this, they don't, you know, when should I reject? Should I reject first? Should I favorite first? Which way do I go? And mm -hmm. it's hard to come up with a strategy for doing this. I've actually, there's one that I found that's worked for me. So. Navigate to your clips, and we do this using the up and down arrows. So right. if I'm going to if I'm going to go to this clip, using the down arrow to get there is also going to place my playhead at the very first frame. Okay. The very first thing I do always is put an endpoint. I'm going to do that because I don't know at this point whether I'm going to want to reject or favorite this sequence coming up. Hmm. So I'm going to do that, then use the space bar to play the clip, and you can see on this footage that. Everybody's coming in from the side. We haven't actually started the take yet. She's about to say her first word. So it's been slated, and you don't want to include that part in what you're Probably use. want to reject this. And in fact, yeah. whenever we shoot, depending on whether you have a good shooting ratio or a bad shooting ratio, maybe there's a lot of things before the actual scene starts, mm -hmm. you want to come to and use J, K, and L, and you want to find that moment where the scene's going to start. Okay. And then normally people say, well, that's where I want my end point. But mm -hmm. I'm going to suggest in this reject favorite world that sometimes it's a better idea to put your out point with what you want to get rid of, hit the delete key, which is going to mark that with that little red line at the top that says this has been rejected. Now immediately put another in point in before you do anything else. And we're going to go forward and we're going to go through the scene, watch her finish up her, her piece of dialogue. At the end of this, she's going to finish her scene. And I can actually hear her for a second, so I'll be able to in a minute. I'm going to get to, I think I know where she ends the scene. Okay, she's delivering her last line. And somewhere my out point's going to be right around here. Now I want to be, if I want to be precise, I can use this K thing and I can just literally so you're holding step, down K and holding tapping down J and K. L to move back and forth a frame at a time. Right, and right. this is the JKL thing that you really have to myelinate into your brain and get used to. You can okay. do it without even thinking about it and just go through vast amounts of footage. So I found the place where my out point is going to be, so I'm going to hit O. Now I have three choices. If I don't like this, 
I can also delete reject it. And we should mention, by the way, when you're pressing the delete key, you're not deleting the clip. No, all not at all. you're doing is adding some metadata that says it's rejected and it's indicated by the red line there. And in a minute, we're going to use this with Final Cut's filters up in the filter range to be able to say, do I want to hide my rejected? Do I want to Great. show my favorites? Or do I want to keep just keep editing and do something else? So if I don't like that, you can just tap the U key and it unrates the section. If I'm just asking myself, do I really want to keep this or not? I'm not mm -hmm. really sure. Maybe I have four takes. Is this the best take? Is this not the best take? Just unrate it and go on. What am I going to do next? Again, I'm going to immediately put in an endpoint. Because that, that endpoint will be basically where your last out point was. Exactly. We're okay. just incrementing through our footage. We're using yep. JKL and multiple taps on JKL if there's huge spaces of stuff you want to get rid of. And doing this, I'm going to put another endpoint here. I'm going to get past all this stuff that's not right. She starts her next take. I'm going to put an out point there. Again, I'm going to delete this. So now I've got a range that's deleted in the front. I've got a whole take that's good, but that I have not rated it's in unrated, any way. It's right. unrated. I have another selection that could be small, could be the camera was left rolling. It could be 15 minutes of right. junk. That you just get rid of. I want to get mm -hmm. rid of that stuff. Mm -hmm. I've marked another selection. I'm going to put an endpoint in again. My, my keyframe goes back there. My playhead is right at the end of that, so I'm going to play through her next section, she does another take. So, okay, they're coming in, I've gone too far. I'm gonna zip back here, here's the end of her take. I'm gonna wait until she probably just finishes saying her last line of this. Let's call it there, I'm gonna mark that as out. This time I'm gonna hit F for favorite, and I'm gonna get a green bar up there. Right, and you don't care that it's not frame accurate, because you can do that when you're trimming in the timeline later. You're just trying to get a rough section that you know that you want. Absolutely, but mm -hmm. I will tell you, I have learned that the more precision I bring to keywording, the more to this range selection process, the better it is because I can eventually filter by these, put them on my timeline, and if I've been relatively precise with my in and out points, it can You're do you close. a lot of good because then you don't have to do a lot of trimming. trimming afterwards. Great. I've actually had a okay. couple of circumstances where I built voiceovers, and because I was very precise with grabbing Yeah, the pieces takes, you want. You hit one key, they all arrive on your timeline, and sometimes the whole job it's is pretty good. done. done. It's yeah, like, yeah. whoa, I just listened back, and I've got a radio spot here. Yeah. <laughs> this is nice, very cool. Nice. So once again, I'm going to hit an endpoint. Mm -hmm. And so you just got to get into this rhythm of wherever you're doing, just put an, put an endpoint at your playhead at the beginning of the clip, and you always make sure that you're there, because if you use the up and down arrows, it's going to go to the next clip in your grouping, yes. and it's going to put the playhead right at the beginning, Tap I, move through, okay. mark a range. Perfect. Doing the same thing, tap an I, going through this. This stuff is all designed to be rejected. We know that to come in, she blows the line there. She needs a line reading. We come back to that. We're going to put in another out point there. We're going to reject that. Put in another one. Here's our third take. She delivers her line. We're going to get to the end of her piece here. And we'll call it there because we don't have to be too precise. Okay, so now. This one may be a favorite, it may not be. Again, if it's not a favorite, I'm going to put an endpoint there. I'm going to just mark a little bit of thing there at the end. You can actually go in, and one of the things you can do is Command Plus will blow up your takes. So you're basically expanding your film strip view to see exactly some to more get detail. down to, yeah. to specific detail to make sure that I get the tail end of this just right. I'm okay. going to reject that clip as well. Now you're going to go up to your filter pane. I'm going to minimize that again, which is up here. Right now we're showing all clips. Okay, so and you're including, that's why we can see the rejected portion, we can see the favorites, and we can see all the unrated parts. Right, in my thing. clip down there, I've got all three types of right. ranges still involved. And you have two choices here. I can hide rejected, which is very useful, because that's going to return the two other classes of my clips. Everything I have rated favorite, right. and everything that's still unrated. We should men probably just mention to people, you've, they're blue, and people are not used to, if you're pretty new to Final Cut, there's a blue here too, which right. means there's been a keyword assigned. Exactly. That okay. was just something that was there from yeah. earlier before we went into this. Okay. But down here at the bottom end, we're seeing that at least that clip, this clip, and this clip are the selects that I've gone through and yes. I've pulled. This is probably a little bit of slop from the end of that, and okay. if I want to, I can just mm -hmm. click on it, hit delete. When you're in the hide rejected, Applying reject immediately takes it away from your view. Makes it disappear. It kind of looks like it's been deleted, but it's just been moved to that. It's been filtered out. Exactly, and okay. that's the power of this. As Great. you go through, you take a bunch of junk, mm -hmm. and you just you don't ever want to deal with the stuff that you know is not yeah. going to make it into your program. It's kind of like having a stack of emails and going back and reading that same email that you should have deleted, and you just wasted all that time. Yeah, why at am it again. I even clicking on this? Right. I just want it completely taken right. away from you me. You think about it again. Now the other option, other than hide rejected, is show favorites, and the the key to this is that that. That's returning one thing. 
-hmm. So with this filtering possibility, I have unrated clips, I have favorites, and I have rejected. Right. Hide rejected reduces to the other two categories. Show favorites gets rid of two categories and leaves me with one yeah. just favorites. Right. So it's good to come up with some, some strategies for how do I want to deploy these three keywords. So if you've got a small short project and you're just looking to grab a couple of clips out of it, maybe you go right to favorites and you don't have to mess with rejected. Right. The more complex your project is, the more powerful it is to get rid of by marking and rejecting the junk you don't want to deal with from this point on. Excellent. JKL, move fast through, get those in points and out points in, always put an in point in immediately, zip through things, put an out point, decide if you want to reject or select or favorite, and then move on. Yep. And with, with clip skimming, with able to move quickly through clips, you can do this in, in faster than real time, Way faster especially the material that you're familiar with, and it, the, the process goes very smooth, and then you're set up to make your edit very quick. Bill, excellent. Thank you. Um, thank you. Where can people uh, find out more about you? You have a blog or a website or anything? Uh, they can find me through, just do a search on New Video AZ. New Video AZ, AZ yeah. as in Arizona. Arizona, Okay, yeah. great. <laughs> or excellent. from A to Z. All right, uh, Bill, thank you very much for coming on. You're welcome. Uh, check Bill out, and thank you for watching MacBreak Studio.